Yup, what's good, original crew, man? We're back. We got another round of the seven daily sins. This time, we got streamers. Some of y'all favorite uh, category of people. <laughs> My bad. I fuck it up, cuz. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we gonna find out uh, what seven streamers are casted as daily sins. So, with that being said, make sure you check out the links in the description box. Down below. You already know where to go, man. You want to further support, all you have to do is check out down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's visuals. Like it with a thumbs up. But let's roll it. Let's get into it. Let's check it out. There are seven streamers that perfectly represent the seven deadly sins, and we'll be talking about all of them, starting with pride. Common synonyms for the sin of pride are egotism, oh, conceit, awesome. vanity, and narcissism. All of these words are perfect descriptors for the sad situation of the streamer Neon. Neon, whose real name is Rangesh Mutama, created his YouTube channel on May 6, 2016. His channel originally focused on gaming content around the NBA 2K series. Watching his early videos, it's clear that Neon was a normal kid who had a real passion for creating content as he posted almost daily during the beginning of his channel. But this consistency still wasn't enough to make him stand out so he switched from making videos to streaming. This switch to streaming along with the release of Fortnite took Neon's live viewers from single digits all the way to the low hundreds. But this increased viewership apparently didn't satisfy Neon's prideful desires as in December 2019 he posted a series of four videos that would be a stain on his online reputation forever. The series began with Neon's brother talking about how Neon was in the hospital in critical condition. Neon reiterated this point in the fall. No, the fuck you. No, y'all ain't. <laughs> after, you know to be honest, y'all should have known after this bullshit. That, that mother. Look at the thumbnail, girl. That just is. You know something? When I see stuff like this, I don't even be surprised. <laughs> I don't even be surprised, you know? Have you ever seen this fool? Yeah. He is one of I the most... I told you, I've, I've seen his face, but I've never, like, tuned wow. in to, like... I just see his face. And I'm going to tell you... I'm going to tell you 100% why he didn't blow up. It was 2016. He was a kid. Other people weren't really watching. Especially older people that really was on the platform back then. Yeah. Weren't really watching people younger than them. They were watching people that's older or the same age. It's very rare that you, you catch older people that's in, into these certain contents that are popular at the time. Really watching people that's so young. You get what I'm saying? At that time. At that time. Yeah. At that time. Now, nowadays, um, you can be young and still blow up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? For one person, for sure, is with Speed. You know what I'm saying? Being young and blew up. But I think with Speed, he still was so captive, captivizing. Captivating. Uh, uh, what you trying to say? But he uh, he was able to capti uh, capti capitalize off of... Oh, capitalize. That's what you was trying to say. He was able to Don't capitalize on the market by really Don't his his people of, of his age group uh, mm -hmm. and younger. And those were typically, especially during uh, shutdown and uh, lockdown, those kids were sitting at home. He was able to rack it up and blow up from there. Video saying he was about to enter surgery in which he would most likely not survive. The series concluded with a video titled He's Gone, which seemed to imply that Neon had passed away. Then, after a dozen Best Moments videos were posted on his channel, Neon posted a new video alleging he had miraculously survived. At the time, this seemed like concerning news, but when you consider that Neon is obviously not in critical condition or even in a hospital in any of the videos he posted during the ordeal, it becomes clear this was just a publicity stunt. From this point on, Neon would slowly but surely continue to ramp up his clout chasing stunts and the level of his own arrogance. More recently, he faced himself getting jumped twice, all to feed his never ending desire for relevancy. In terms of internet success, Neon Sin is actually propelling him to stardom. This is. Some of you know. Nah, I ain't gonna speak on that. No, nah. I'm gonna just keep, keep my comments on that. I, w I wish the best for the brother. Hopefully, one day he wakes up and realizes viewer viewership and uh, numbers. It's not, does not mean as much as he thinks it does in the world. You get what I'm saying? Like, 
Quit clout chasing, my, my G. Find, find, take some time away from the internet and find out who you truly are. Certainly not the case for our candidate for Lust, whose sin caused him to leave the internet and never come back. Lust is usually thought of as uncontrollable sexual desire, especially when you sacrifice something important because of it. In the streaming world, there may not be any person better to exemplify lust than Jakishi. Jakishi, whose real name is Demetrius, was a Minecraft streamer who had been grinding for almost a decade without gaining any kind of significant traction in viewership. His journey would take a seemingly positive turn when Dream heard about this young grind and decided to raid his stream. After the dream raid, Jakishi went from under 50 viewers per stream to consistently averaging in the hundreds. But the even better news came a few months later when Jakishi was invited to Dream's Minecraft server, the Dream SMP. This was great news because joining the Dream SMP was pretty much a guaranteed ticket to success in the online Minecraft world. Although this increased exposure had some unforeseen consequences for Jakishi, mainly the dozens of stories that would begin to surface which made it clear he was addicted to grooming children. There are over 40 people who came forward to talk about their experience with Jakishi, and it would take far too long to read all of them, but all the stories essentially share a similar pattern that goes like this. Jakishi meets a 12 to 13 year old girl in a Discord server. The conversation quickly turns NSFW, with Jakishi pressuring them to continue talking even if they are uncomfortable. Throughout the conversation, he continuously asks for reassurance that the girl will never tell anyone about their quote unquote secret relationship but fortunately for everyone, some of the girls didn't listen to him. It didn't take long for Dream to find out about the accusations and then subsequently remove Jakishi from the SMP, ending his online career forever. Even though it's doubtful Jakishi would have been able to- Some of them details, I didn't even remember, you know what I'm saying? I didn't remember. I just remember his face. I just, I didn't remember exactly. I remember what exactly was. what it was, but I didn't know the number was that high. I mm. mean, 40? Yeah, I didn't know that. Well, I don't remember. Like when he said it, I was like, I don't remember hearing it. But that like when we had what well, reacted to something. Sunny V two. Yeah. Sunny V two spoke on. I be, I really wonder what he what happened to these people when they miras miraculous get it out miraculously. You still sincere say it. That's how you say it. Just talk. Pipe down. Yo, Pipe say, down. Like, but I wonder. <laughs> I wonder what like what really happened to them when they just. Dip from the internet and just try to phase back into life. Like, I wonder, you go get a regular job, or you notice, do people bring it up in your everyday life? Yeah. Like, do you just try to fade off a of camera and expect people to not, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. your face is going to be forever placing on YouTube. Like, everybody and their mama and their grandparents watch YouTube. So, somebody in your everyday life going to visit come across the video any kind of audience after he was exposed, he did make somewhat of a smart decision to go completely silent on all of his socials to prevent further damage. A decision that our candidate for gluttony did the reverse of. Many of you have pointed out that the sin of gluttony doesn't just apply to food. Gluttony can be indulging in anything to the point of excess or destruction. The streamer Justa Minx is a sad but perfect example of this destruction taking place. Justa Minx, whose real name is Rebecca, is an Irish streamer who streams on the Just Chat genre of Twitch. She began creating content when she was 12 years old and over the years she developed a small but loyal audience. This small audience would explode when she was featured on the popular Twitch game show Love or Host. But around the time of her blow up, Rebecca's new viewers would notice some strange things about her behavior on stream. The most obvious was her frequent emotional breakdowns which resulted in her screaming at the camera. These breakdowns would almost always be paired with copious amounts of alcohol consumption. The alcohol consumption and erratic behavior began to create a sad cycle. The more alcohol Minx consumed, the more insane her behavior became, and the more viewers would stop by to observe the train wreck. But like most train wrecks on the internet, they aren't sustainable for long periods of time, which is evidenced by Rebecca's statistics. On the bright side, Rebecca has indicated that she is- Is it a possible reason why she did it? Because she was getting views? And she I, I was- uh, Yeah, I was thinking, I was like, at what point did she ever talk about it? Like, what was going on? Was she just doing it because- People were coming, you know, That's when the they numbers, to come you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or was she actually going through something? Like, like what was it? Because yeah. I've never heard of her. Yeah, I've never heard of her either.
wrote to recovery from her sin, which can't be said about our candidate for envy. The sin of envy is thought of as having extreme jealousy of the achievements and blessings of others, and there isn't any streamer who built their career on top of envy as effectively as Nadia. To understand how she accomplished this, we have to go all the way back to the beginning of Nadia's journey. Nadia began streaming in early 2021, where she averaged around 10 viewers for a few months. Her game of choice was Call of Duty, a game which Nadia oh, appeared to be very talented at. Nadia also seem driven to break the stigma that female gamers can't play at the same level as their male counterparts. This was something that she frequently talked about during her streams, leading Nadia to gain a decent amount of traction on Twitch and boosting her average viewers from 10 to 100. A female gamer who was unapologetically committed to being technically good at a video game was a breath of fresh air to the viewers on Twitch, who became part of Nadia's growing community. But Nadia's mission would also prove to be a double-edged sword because her arrogant attitude about being a quote-unquote girl player who was better than the guys led people on the internet to examine her gameplay and find some very suspicious activity. There were multiple moments where her crosshair unnaturally snapped onto her enemies in ways that wouldn't be physically possible with human reaction times. For example, there's a moment where she sees an enemy parachuting in from above and locks onto an enemy that wasn't even visible on screen. Nadia has pretty ineffectively tried to defend herself from these cheating allegations, claiming any discrepancy found in her gameplay is just a glitch. Nadia Nadia has also taken the bizarre approach of saying that criticism levied against her is sexism because men don't like that a girl is better than they are at their favorite game. Even though Nadia's public image is pretty much decimated, her average Twitch viewers are only on the uptrend, which may be proof that tapping into a sin like Envy can actually be beneficial for your online career. Despite her incinerated image, with all of Nadia- I, Like, we didn't came across her and then uh, people talk about her uh, quite often because she cheats at the game. Mm -hmm. And- we just seem like more and more people break down. Like every time I come across her and see her, it's just more details and it's more details and more details. Wow. You don't remember? I remember. I just remember. <laughs> Was it in a reaction as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but other than that, I haven't heard anything of. No, I just, personally, honestly, I haven't because yeah. I don't be like tuning in to a lot. <laughs> to be honest, I don't. I just be my own bubble. Facts. It's sources, we can confidently say she brings home a lot of profit at the end of the day, which is the complete opposite of our candidate for Wrath. Wrath is defined as uncontrollable anger, and there is no streamer that represents uncontrollable anger better than Bossman Jack, whose real name is Austin Peterson. Austin is different from our previous Wrath candidates in a pretty significant way. His Wrath is driven by a sad and crippling addiction gambling. Austin began his journey into streaming and gambling in 2019 on the classic video game RuneScape. In this game, he would quickly get a reputation as a scammer by taking massive loans of RuneScape's in-game currency, then betting it all in duels. As time went on, Austin became unsatisfied with betting with fake money, so he decided to start streaming actual online gambling. From the moment after making this decision, Austin became stuck in a perpetual cycle of win, lose, repeat. When he wins, Austin looks extremely happy, jumping up and down with excitement, but the interesting thing about this is it's not the money that's making Austin happy, it's the winning itself. The evidence for this is that Austin will never just end his stream after winning, he always continues until he's back to zero. The next stage in the cycle is lose. Whoa, the losing oh stage gosh. is marked by some of the most intense wrath I have ever seen from a content creator on the internet. Austin will make holes in his wall, destroy his door, and even physically harm himself after losing. The especially what? sad thing about this situation is the fact that his viewers enjoy these rage sessions, creating a horrible cycle of incentivizing Austin's sin to increase his viewership. With everything we know about Austin- That is so true. That's one reason why he's like snapping out like that, because he know he's going to get clicked. And I know a lot of people do that, like as far as like the raging and punching holes in a wall. Okay, cool, whatever. That's, you have to repair or pay for that or whatever. But it's the, the harming yourself, like doing yeah. something to yourself. Like, okay, that's OD. Like, let's Facts. not do that. Like, just for views or whatever the case, or or I don't know what it's for, but because he's another person that I haven't. That you haven't. So keep talking. Oh, that I haven't come across. No, I have never heard of him before. But I was, was looking at me like, yes, we have. And I was no, like, no, 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 I, haven't. I was drinking. Oh, I was literally in the process like, of drinking. I have you And I'm like, him. keep talking. <laughs> but no, he's another person I haven't. Never like, heard of him yeah. before. But, but I don't know how he problem. is now or what he, you know, what's going on now. Serious anger problems. Like, so nice. hopefully. You see the that one? That's a lot of people. But I, I really feel like because it, it, it boosts up views on YouTube where I really feel like 
people like lash out and really do that stuff because they know it's gonna get clipped. It's yeah, gonna get like, pushed. Once you start doing it and you see how people gravitate to it, and like, they talk it, about, oh, like this is so turn. We're like, like, okay, oh, I gotta do that. I gotta amp it up. You know, if what I'm I if I lose at this game, I gotta turn it up. Yeah. I gotta because it go viral just like no long. Uh, a couple of days ago, when Kai lost, mm-hmm. he tore up his head. Now all the blog pages, oh, oh, yeah. look, and then hopefully he doesn't get into the habit. Okay, I went viral for that. That it, it actually works. Now yeah. more people are gonna tune into the stream, which I doubt. Kai, yeah, I was like, I doubt, I doubt he'll I, do it. Yeah, but I doubt he will, but a lot of people will lot take of people that and like, like run with it. Like, okay, I went viral for that. Yeah. Well, let me take it up to the stream next time. So. Yeah. He definitely isn't a savvy creator by any means. So while his mistakes are significant, they are also understandable. Our next candidate is extremely savvy, which makes her sin completely baffling. Greed is thought of as the intense and selfish desire for more than necessary. Our candidate for greed is unlike the other streamers on this list because she has kept up a perfect image, but her desire for more led her to make a foolish business decision that may have potentially destroyed her viewers' trust forever. Pokimane, one of the most popular streamers Streamers on the internet saw the success of other influencer products like Feastables, Prime, and Kylie Cosmetics. Having a large audience of her own, she decided to create her own consumer packaged goods product, which led her to launching Mina Cookies, a company that provided a supposedly healthier alternative to mainstream cookie brands. Everything seemed like it was going according to plan until the price of her cookies were revealed at $7 for a small bag. This price isn't as crazy as you may think, because there are plenty of premium healthy cookies on the market which cost a similar amount. What the internet discovered is that these supposedly premium cookies were a white labeled copy of nearly identical cookies with a 225% markup on the price. The only difference between the recipe of Pokimane's cookies and the other ones is an insignificant amount of vitamin D. The drama likely would have died, but Pokimane made the terrible decision of insulting the section of her audience that couldn't afford her cookies. Oh my god, $28 for cookies? Why well, no math is hard when you're an idiot, but... If you're a broke boy, just say so. This may be one of the worst things you can say as a successful content creator, as it was your audience that got you to the position you're in. Your wealth was accumulated because of these people you're not calling broke and poor. It is incomprehensible to me. You were made from these people that you are now shaming. Despite her massive business failure, Pokimane's now- Well, she could've just went in, like, to be honest, I'm gonna tell you the, the quickest, easiest way, because the markup is- so much you got you're not gonna feel the effect of doing what I'm gonna say. Your people complaining, you could just be like, all right, what I can do, let me do a twenty percent off for my sub, like people who sub to me. Mm-hmm. You get a twenty percent off cube and folks would be like, Oh, like they really would have bought into it yeah. even more by you saying, Oh, I get a discount for sub now you finna get even like you're gonna be smart that's about a the way to address things because you have to understand that financially everyone is not on the same level so calling somebody a broke boy is not the best especially thing to the do. people that put especially money in your pocket especially these are the people that's putting money in your pocket constantly they day sub after day, to you sub they donate you, donating watching you supporting you yeah like I'll, there's a way to talk to people or handle situations and that was not and facing a backlash cool. mainly because of the price you could have literally said, hey, since our joint is over 200% or marker of, a, of our competitor, how about we do a 20%, 25% off mm-hmm. for all my sub, sub members and stuff like that. They get a special donate uh, code yeah. if they sub to me. You run up your subs that way. Also, you run up your product push. Mm-hmm. And so now, also, if the product is good, and you're, they, you're, they'll put it up, up and then also say, hey, Post post me on your on, in your stories and I repost you on my in my boom boom because boom. you also have to understand because now I'm thinking I'm like the cookies twenty eight not even that I'm just talking about the price I'm like oh, tw- yeah. the cookies are twenty eight I don't know how the shipping is and stuff like that because exactly. you have to take that tax you know all of that that all goes into effect so people are paying more than just the twenty eight yeah so that would have been dope to like do something like that there's ways to handle just, things just yeah just to come back the 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 it's called the, professionalism being professional especially if you're gonna be or just be nice be nice <laughs> to your people like what but anyway yeah. moving on 
is still in excess of 20 million, which shows it doesn't matter how rich you are, you can always fall back into sin. Our next candidate proves this even more with a net worth exceeding even mm, that of Pokimane, falling into a sin okay. which seems to be especially dangerous to those with success. Sloth is thought of as extreme laziness. It's one of the only sins that is based on omission rather than action. This video's candidate for Sloth is unique in that his laziness not only hurts himself and his own image, but also hurts other content creators as well by essentially stealing from them. This candidate is XQC or Felix. Felix is what you would call a React streamer or someone who creates content by watching other people's content live on stream, clips themselves watching it, and then monetizes it on YouTube. Now, of course, there are a lot of React streamers, but what makes Felix stand out as particularly slothful is the fact that he offers so little additional content during his reactions. 95% of the time, he just simply watches the content and the other 5% of the time, he laughs or says a small descriptive comment. In some particularly egregious cases, he will play a video, then leave the room, allow the video to play, and then come back when it's almost finished, and still monetize the content on YouTube. In the case of XQC, it seems oh, like just- man, literally dip, right? Did you see how he skipped that? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I see. said, no, no, skip, skip hold on. He literally dipped on the content <laughs> just so y'all, so he can say he got something up for y'all. He know nine times out of 10, y'all not interested in this. Y'all just wait for him to come back. Typically, when people walk off stream like this, mm -hmm. they're either having to go go for a bathroom break, so they put something on there to yeah, keep y'all yeah, yeah. entertained. They're going for a bathroom break, or they got some something at the door. Something. He looks like, all right, but bro, it be I'm, like quick, and they try like you could tell, like, like two, they three trying minutes. to, you yeah, know, yeah. let me get back to my people. You yeah, know, I'm because, not trying to have y'all wait. First of all, it's rude as hell. Because for but, one, um, I, I understand you having to go for a bathroom break, yeah, or you get, yeah, yeah. or you get a DoorDash order. But skipping so you up having the to, room and what? And fifteen minutes later, that's fifteen minutes on, later, man. you just come back with a water. It really what it looks like. You didn't give a fuck of what's going on. You really wasn't interested in. You just had to keep up because. I've seen and heard about this before, yeah. but you had to keep up with your uh, quoted mm -hmm. hours that you have to stream. So it's like, damn, I have to be here. So fuck it. I ain't interested in this shit yeah. for real. I'm going to just put up something just so I can abide by the quota. Yeah. That's sad. That's crazy almost finished and still monetize the content on YouTube. In the case of XQC, it seemed like justice had been done because his YouTube channel was banned for copyright violations, but then was shortly reinstated. Oh. To see which YouTubers represent the seven deadly oh. sins, go watch this video now. Somebody hit, hit him with a uh, copyright strike, but he was able to appeal it yeah. because he, he probably petitioned it as transformative content. Uh -huh. But, because somebody, somebody did us like that. Somebody literally was taking our videos. Uh, not just us. They took our video. They took a lot of creators, typically a lot of minority creators, and re-uploaded them. And honestly, I ain't hit it with a strike or nothing. But I did petition for, for our video to come down, and it did come down. Yeah. Luckily, we didn't have a... Uh, at the time, we have a... Like, we wasn't assigned a YouTube manager at the time. Yeah. We was in the transition process of getting a new one. Our old one, the the uh, the program had just ended, and they was in the process of transitioning us from one uh, partner to the next. Yeah, but we still had our. I, I, I ain't gotta get that up off it. And after we petitioned it, though, day later the channel, like it's different from reacting than just straight up stealing. That's yeah, that's different. Like I. Like, I, don't just take somebody's video and just upload it. Like, because I've seen reactors be like, hey, and folks, folks are mad because they're striking their channel down. And they was like, hey, I have no problem with you taking my video. If you react to it, you are adding to it. But if you just straight up taking videos uh, and, and you I, uploading it, and that's think, disrespectful. Uh, yeah. I was already in the process. Of I didn't say nothing. No, nah, cause I, but you were finna say what though? I was just gonna say, and some people feel like, okay, I'm sitting here, I'm laughing, um, you know, I may say two or three words, that's good enough, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah, like, nah, you nah, really nah, have nah, to nah, like nah. put some type of other input, like, like interact you really with gotta the video. transform it, react. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, inter interact. <laughs> that's what I meant. I was like, <laughs> whatever. You know what I'm trying to say? Interact but with for real, watching, you know what I'm saying? Like, show interest. There you go. So it's just add like you it real one hundred percent interested in it. Add like yo, we watching this because I came across it and I and I 
felt as though we're all you gonna enjoy. You don't even have to act if you came across and you like, oh, this sound, this sound interesting. Sounds just, sound like something I should put on my stream. Let's do it. Like just do it. You know what I'm saying? If it's nothing that you're into, then don't do it because it's not gonna be genuine. But anyway. But like you said, but, a lot of people just look at the money aspect of it. I didn't say that. I said he. I said, oh, he, he said. said that. <laughs> I was like, I didn't say that, but that's true. It's, it, it was just, it's just for a check. It's, <laughs> it's not for your are. entertainment. It's not because it's for, like, it's even their entertainment. It's only solely, merely for a check. Like, honestly, when you're doing reaction, you got to find what's inter interesting for you and the viewer. Yeah. Because I can't sit up here and fake like I'm interested in something because it's not going to come off genuine it's to the viewer as well. It's, honey, it's been plenty of times we set up here and... Or people have suggested or stuff. Or suggested or, something. And we and just we, like, that we, just ain't we, my interest. We try, or if it wasn't our interest, or we tried to react to it, and it was just like, nah. I can't do it because I'm just not a fake person. So I can't sit up here and act like I'm into it if I'm not into it. You but, know what I'm saying? But y'all have put us on to a lot a of lot new of stuff, stuff. And we appreciate y'all for And we it. appreciate that. But if we don't react to it and, you, and people are blowing us up, it just either we might we're have not into it or we try to, and, and it, it just, just wasn't wasn't for us. One connecting, <laughs> and sometimes you got to realize everything is not meant for everybody. It's not, and just because you see, oh man, these reactors out here, they like, bro, they also a lot of reactors enjoy reacting. Yeah, don't call a lot of big uh, content creators have hopped on a reacting wave. Mm -hmm. Just like, Psh, I'm just doing. They really don't care. Yeah, so. But to but my favorite thing, teach us all. Yeah, as man. long as everybody happy, it's yeah. all that matter. <laughs> but hey, y'all, spin us up, man. Let us know y'all thoughts do. about it down below. But as always. I do go by the name DJ Nikki. This is Sierra Coast. We are. We are. Go and get it. Ain't no time to kick it. Got a stack of flip for my foes. Dollar, 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 dollar.